All right, let's go ahead and get started. I want to rec um, respect your time. Are we having fun so far? We're only halfway through day one of two for uh, Comms Be Next. Um, again, one of my favorite conferences. I am a productivity specialist, so I'm like, why do they have me here? I don't talk PSTN, PSD, nothing. Well, it's, it's not my thing. I'm all about productivity. My hashtag is where's the waffle because I think a lot of the conferences that I go to anyway, the speakers are about you know governance and dev and power platform. But like, uh, no, let's just get our job done. So I like to do productivity topics. And if you know me at all, I talk real. Um, you know, there's all the marketing spin. Microsoft doesn't pay me directly. I'm a contractor, but uh, they don't pay me to, to for my opinions. Um, and so I like to kind of talk real. So you know, productivity killers. How many feel like they're they use teams to the fullest and it makes their life completely easier. Never a hand when I ask that question, ever, ever. So we'll talk about that. All right, so who am I? Um, I'm Sherry Oswald and uh, of course this conference will not go on without all of our sponsors. So we want to thank them. The same sponsors are here almost every year and you see the same sponsors over and over again. And we wouldn't be able to put these on without them. So thank them very much. Go visit their booths, give them some love, and you might get cool swag. <laughs> All right. So I'm with a company called Power Up Learning. Our specialty is change management learning and adoption. But I don't teach what I don't do. So I'm not going to like teach pie in the sky something from a book. I only like to teach the stuff that I work in. So we're practitioners. We're authors. I'm a consultant, too. I've been using SharePoint since before it was called SharePoint. So when I teach, I don't just give you what's in the book. I give you all my sparklies, too. They're also known as gray hair, so I call them my sparklies. I hide those as much as possible. But they come out in my knowledge of my uh, technology. So if you have any interest in any of those, let's let us know. How do you reach out to me? This is how you get a hold of me. They call me Shortcut Sherry, S-H-A-R-I. It started out as a joke. and. Um, I embraced it and branded it, and that's kind of how you find me. So all my blog, Facebook, LinkedIn, everything, shortcutsherry.com. And uh, it came out of one of my classes. I was like, the shortcut for this, the shortcut for that. And somebody goes, aren't you just shortcut Sherry? I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> Let me put my cape on. Yeah. So I love to work smarter, not harder. And my big... Um, my mission is I create passionate, energetic, and creative learning opportunities based on real-world technologies. I want to make your, find solutions for you. I'm not, if I never teach Word Level 1, Excel Level 2 again, I'm good with that. <laughs> That's a complete waste of most people's time. I do have clients that want that, though. I also have three courses on LinkedIn Learning. If, I'll leave that up there for a second. There's a little bitly there that is case-sensitive. If you want to go out, you can get a free trial and watch uh, three of my courses that are there. So again, LIL for LinkedIn Learning, Dash, and then Shortcut Sherry. All right, so what are we here for? We're here to talk about the seven productivity killers in Microsoft Teams. Um, Microsoft Teams, when it first came out, I'm like, really? They're like, it's going to replace Outlook. I'm like, I'm really, really good at Outlook. They're going to take my Outlook away? You want me to chat with people? and put files in other places and all of that. It's like, why are you taking away what, taking me out of my comfort zone? And slowly but surely, I have, um, I'm in the team's boat. I gravitate to it more than I gravitate directly to the SharePoint that's, uh, by the way, behind the scenes. You know, spoiler alert, everything is in SharePoint or OneDrive. And the, um, but kind of the pain points that I found, why I was struggling to adopt and use uh, Microsoft Teams is because it made me less productive. And when I found the ways around that, that's kind of how I came up with this session, is like, let's talk about the ways that we are less efficient and how we can fix those in Teams. All right, so the first one is TMT syndrome. How many of you feel like you have too many Teams? That Teams pain, P-A-N-E, is a P-A-I-N, because there's just too many. You're scrolling up and down. Does that sound like sound familiar? All right, I have a demo environment that I'm going to share with you that has Microsoft Teams in it. If it will let me get there, it's the one screen. Pro oh, do not disconnect me. Make sure I'm on the internet. I am on. 
let's try that again. Just when you think you're ready. Okay, then we are going to go the back door. One. Because I win. I try to use the remotes as when, whenever I can, but they don't always work. Megan. And we will be using the um, web version, obviously, because the remotes aren't working. There we go. All right, let's go to Teams now. So Microsoft Teams is a Tool in the toolbox. I have found in the last several years, especially, a lot of companies, what they've done is they have released Teams, they put it on their desktop. Oh, and it's not showing. All right, let me fix that. We'll do that. Thank you, Rue. <laughs> the blessing and the curse of technology. All right, now we're cooking with gas. Okay, all apps. How many of you have ever gone out to ex this little view, explore all your apps in Microsoft? Yeah, well, they've made it harder. They, there's one more click now. There used to be two clicks. Now it's four clicks to get there. This is all of the tools that are in the toolbox for Microsoft Teams. And um, what I've seen, like I said, more often than not in the last few years, is companies have released Teams, they put a little icon on their desktop and they're like, oh, this is how I call people. This is how I chat people. They don't realize there's all these other things behind the scenes that help them get their job done. So knowing that it's part of a suite of tools and these tools, uh, Teams is just the layer on top of all of these. It's how you access those and give you a central toolbox. So kind of the analogy I use, I'm like, if I were doing a home uh, improvement project, my screwdriver might be in one room, my hammer might be in another room, my drill is in another room, and my um, saw is in another room. So I'd have, whatever I'm building, I would have to take it from room to room to room to get that done. That's not efficient, right? Putting these all in one toolbox, which is Microsoft Teams, lets people work from one place and access all the tools that are available to them and use the sharpest tool for the job. I could take a screwdriver and, and pound in a, a nail with that, but it's not the sharpest tool for the job, right? We want to use a hammer for that. So knowing what all of your tools are and how they're put together in Teams is one of the ways you can be more productive. So I'm going to go to Teams, and if it's going to cooperate with me, they are alphabetical, there it is. So Microsoft Teams, too many Teams syndrome, what I typically see are uh, companies that roll it out and they think they needed a team for everything. Ruth and I need to work together, right? I'm going to create a team because I need to have a call with Ruth. So I created a team for that, right? Well, now I'm going to work with you, so, and, and now I'm going to create a team for that. Now the three of us need to work together and I need a team for that. So they have all these teams. Are you kidding me? What is the deal? Is there an outage today? I know I've, I have been struggling in the last couple of weeks. I guess they rolled back an update. Did anybody hear that? Yeah, because y'all are watching me. <laughs> I can tap dance. It's not pretty. Wow. I can get there the back way. It's kind of hard to teach teams when teams won't show up, right? Let's 
play this one. Does anybody know what the, start with a D, the code for the Wi-Fi? What was it? D-E. Says it's open. All right. It, oh, don't scare it. It looks like it's doing something. And we got things spinning all over back there. Yay! Oh, look, teams. Yay! Okay. So the blessing and curse of technology. All right. So if you, I look at these teams on the left hand side. There's a lot of options for me to work. These lovely little pop-up boxes, Microsoft is evolving these tools all the time. If you close these, you're probably missing out on that thing. There's like, oh, where's that been my whole life? So make sure you read these pop-up boxes. I'm going to close them now for the, you know, time's sake, but whatever. But I always, I love it when these pop up because you can't make them pop up. You don't want them to. All right, so the Teams um, panel, when you are creating your Teams, I ha here's my formula for creating Teams. Who needs to work together? What are they working on? How are they going to get that work done? So who needs to work together is the team itself. Which group of people are working together? Now, uh, what's your name, sir? Sean. OK, so Sean, Ruth, and I need to work together. Sometimes I need to work with Ruth. Sometimes I need to work with Sean. Sometimes I need, just need to share stuff for myself. Do I need a team for each of those interactions? Or can I create a team where the three of us can always work together, regardless of what we're working on? Does it matter if Ruth sees what I'm working on with Sean, or Sean's working on with me? Or if that doesn't matter, because when you're in a team, you're all a part of the team. You all have the same permission. You all have the same access to everything. Um, you, know, you have the same ability to delete and add. Um, so when you're working in a team, the whole point is to be collaborative. So when I see a whole team full of private channels, kittens die for me. It's like you just killed the whole point of this. We're supposed to collaborate and work together, right? So the um, identifying who's working together and what they're working on um, is the first step. So what are they working on? Those are the channels. Create a channel that people can tune into. When I need to talk, I'm working on this sales and marketing, and I, and I just do the monthly reports for sales and marketing. I don't really care about what's going on in general. That's something that's important to me. Maybe if I'm working on this uh, Mark 8 project team, I only work with the digital assets web. Maybe I'm the creative person that works with Photoshop and Illustrator and creates all the cool. I don't need to really know what's going on in research and development or what's going on in design unless I need to incorporate it into the graphics that I'm creating. It might be nice to know about. But do I really need to go check and see what's going on in their day-to-day -day basis? No, I can tune into that channel, just like we tune in on a TV or tune in on a radio, right? I just want to, this is what I'm focusing on. So when I see like that one uh, team that has the general and that's all, and they've got everything in the general channel, I'm like, why? Give people areas to focus on. The other thing I see are teams that are company-wide and then they have a channel for every department. Who has one of those in their organization? Nobody? Oh, good. People are learning. It's a bad plan. Because now you're getting bombarded with communications across the organization for every single department. And guess what people are going to do? Tune out. Yep. They're like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear all this. This is too much. I'm overwhelmed. And they're, gonna, they're just going to ignore all of it. They're, they tune out teams. They stop using teams because it's too much. Right? So we want to make sure that we're feeding them in the right spaces, in the right groups, with the right areas of focus, OK? So who needs to work together? What are they working on? And across the top are the tabs. How are they going to get that work done? Are they going to use Planner to tra plan, their, uh, tr plan their tasks? Are they going to use OneNote to track their agendas and their notes and their, um, their to-do lists, things like that? What is the tool, the sharpest tool in the job from the toolbox, can you bring into each channel for them to get that work done? Does that make sense? Right. So when you have too many teams, what I often see is this should have been a channel of another team. This should not have been its own channel or its own team with its one general um, channel that everything is in. Give them a channel in another team. And if it's okay, if you know, who cares? 
if the digital assets web people see what's going on in the go-to-market plan, who cares? Does it matter? Then give them one space to work in. Because they could have created a digital assets team and maybe they had for each event or each project, maybe they had different channels for that. It just all depends. Okay. Yes, Ruth. In a team? Well, um, kind of the, the school of thought is, all right, we have peer groups, and I'll talk about that too. Um, it's like you and I sitting in our, at our office and working together, right? Sometimes we need a conference room where we can gather, right, and communicate and work and collaborate together. And sometimes we need the auditorium because we have a larger group, right? So chat is the conference room. You and I are working together. Um, teams are the conference area. Maybe a uh, cube farm, if you think of it that way. You might have a different pod. So the different channels might be, maybe it's accounting. Here's accounts payable, accounts receivable, right, in that group. Okay. Yammer is the auditorium. So how many voices, how much interaction? If you put 250 people in a team, and everybody's putting in, how's that any better than email? Everybody, everybody hits reply all, and they bombard your inbox. Yeah. <laughs> 500 in a team? 1,200. Oh, no. Yeah, that, yeah, that's like organization-wide. Again, people are going to tune out because there's too many voices, right? You can't pick areas of focus. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a fine balance with, you know, fewer teams, but not with 1,200 people in them. Yeah, I don't. I, that would not be my happy place. Who would love that? 1,200 people chiming in on a thing. Yeah, nobody. Yeah. It's got to be reasonable, right? So in your team's pain, a couple other things that you might want to know about. You can clean this up a little bit. You can say, you know what? I really work on this market project team the most. I'm just going to drag and drop that to the top of the panel. And this is where I work the most. Maybe this design group I don't work in there that much. I can hide that team. I don't have to leave it. I just want to hide it. So I'm going to hide the team, and it shows up in this little group at the bottom that says hidden team. I'm still going to get the notifications, the activity, but if it's something more passive that I'm working on, I don't need it in front of my face all the time. And I'm going to um, pay attention to it and go look at it whenever I'm ready. And then you can also just leave. Like this one, I'm not even part of this project anymore. I'm going to leave that team. And I'm out, out of the loop, okay? So clean up your team's panel. If you have been, if you are part of the group that in, uh, without knowing any better, you created teams willy-nilly and they're all over the place and you can't find anything, good luck. Just try and consolidate them if you can. The hard part about it is you cannot migrate content team to team in the same environment. You can, you can migrate the files you, but you can't change like the conversations. You can't move the conversations with them. So uh, if you're okay with losing the conversations, you can consolidate them and move the files over to a different channel of a different team. All right. Yeah. Yeah, you can move a remote, like you can um, reorder the teams itself. You can't reorder the channels in the teams. They're alphabetical, except for generals at the top and the channels are alphabetical. So yeah, we don't have control of that yet. We never know what Microsoft's coming up with, right? All right, yeah, I can't drag and drop the channels in here. All right. Now, how do we, if I need to work with just one-on-one, -on -one, people forget you have the chat option. So chat is how I'm going to work. I don't need a whole team because team creates a SharePoint site. It creates a planner board. It creates a Power BI dashboard workspace. It creates all of these artifacts when all I really needed to do was have a phone call and have you work with me on a file. You don't need a team for that. You can create a chat. So let's say I have this chat with Pradeep and we're working on things, or Patty, and I need her to help me work on a file. I can just add a, oh, looks like she's external. Okay, so um, please help. with this, right? And attach a file. Now, what are my options there? 
attach cloud files, or upload from this device. I can't share a document that's on a network drive or on my personal device. It's got to upload it to the cloud first. So something to be aware of when you're working in chat and you share a file, it doesn't create a SharePoint site. Chat equals OneDrive. So when I create a file and I upload, let's say I uploaded a file from here, and maybe it's this presentation. It's going to put it in my cloud storage. And if, if I didn't pick it and put it there first, it's going to put it in a weird little folder called um, Microsoft Teams chat files. <laughs> so if you're looking for it in OneDrive, you put it there. Okay. So remember, you can have a workspace. And Adele and Johanna, here's a best kept secret. Once we have uh, started activity together, I can actually rename this. Maybe we're working on the um, spring conference presentation. Okay. So it doesn't have to be Adele, Johanna, and Eric, and Bob, and whatever in the names. Because once you put like four or five people in there, it gets too big and you can't read it. So name your group chats to be something that makes sense for you. Okay. Use group chats instead of Teams, if you can. Everybody on board with that? Correct. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Versus a chat. Yeah. 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 Just remember when you want to unshare it, you got to unshare it in OneDrive because you can't unshare it in Teams. But it lives in OneDrive. So yeah, that's a big one. All right. So the next productivity killer is pop-up fatigue. You got mail. You got mail. You got mail. You got mail. How many love that little purple pop-up that shows up on top of everything when driving you nuts? Yeah, no. So you can control those. The defaults are in, a, um, in the settings in the upper right-hand corner. If you click the settings, you have the notifications options. And these are the default settings for all of Microsoft Teams. So right now, it's set to custom. Write all activity. If you're getting purple pop-ups every two seconds and they're driving you nuts, it's probably because you have all activity turned on. If you want to customize that you, for the whole environment, you can say, I only want mentions and replies. Only when my, I've been mentioned or my teams that I'm involved in or the ones I'm following are mentioned, and then I'll get the pop-up. See, the stay in the know, turn on desktop applications. All right, how many times do I have to dismiss that? I get that thing all the time. Leave me alone, right? I know. Or you can go into custom and you can say, do you want banner and feed for personal mentions? And we're going to talk about mentions later. Uh, team mentions, replies to conversations that I started, probably a higher priority than the ones I'm just involved in or there, it happened to be in the channels that I'm part of. Um, likes and reactions. If somebody says, I liked your response, I liked your response, I like, okay, great, you like my response, I got it, right? I don't need to know every time somebody gives me a thumbs up. So you can decide how you would prefer. I only want to show those in the feed. The ones that I started, maybe I want the banner, which is the pop-up. Uh, replies to things that I replied to, that I've replied to, show only in the feed. Um, team mentions, I want to show only in the feed. Personal mentions, I want to know about. So I'm going to put that in the banner and feed because somebody called me out by name. Okay. And so um, all new posts on your pinned channels. And Microsoft loves to play with these settings. They change them all the time. So you may want to periodically go in here and see what the heck they did today, uh, usually on Wednesdays because, you know, Microsoft Tuesday and all of that. So uh, double check in here periodically. All right, so these are the overall team settings. But if I want to, if I have specific um, channels or teams that I want to focus in on, in your teams channels, click the little dot, 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 and here's the channel notifications. You can say, you know, for everything else, if somebody replies to a conversation I started, then just, you know, put it in the feed and that's fine. But for this particular channel, I need to know when people are talking. So you can make these ones be more active. 
So you have that ability on each one of your channels. So focus in on what's important to you. The rest of it's going to show up in this little activity bell and show up in the feed there, and we'll talk about that. Okay? Doesn't mean you're going to miss out, just means you're not going to get the little pop-ups every five minutes. All right, let's hear the, the pop-up fatigue. What's the next one? Communication. Status messages and mentions. Um, how many of you have an out-of-office reply on your um, status today? I'm not here, sorry, <laughs> right? I'm at a fun conference and you're not, ha ha. Um, that is a very passive communication because somebody has to email you before they get that, right? Have you ever spent 10, 15 minutes crafting an email and then as soon as you sent it, you get that, I'm out of the office for the next two weeks, realizing you just wasted your time. All right, so the, I think one of the most overlooked uh, options that we have in Teams that can help us be more productive is to set your status message in Teams. It does not change for, unless you're out of office, it does tie together with Outlook, but this status message is only in Teams. By default, it reads your calendar and looks at your availability. You can, if you finish a meeting early, you can set yourself as available, or if you're um, working heads down on something, you can put on Do Not Disturb, but for the most part, if you're in a meeting, you're gonna show busy. If you're presenting, you're gonna be Do Not Disturb. If you don't have anything on your calendar, you're going to be available. And if you've walked away from your computer for more than five minutes or haven't touched the keyboard or the mouse, you go on away mode, right? You can set that yourself. So what happened, especially when I started working remotely, I'd sit there all day. Anybody have this? I'd sit there all day long. I'd get up to go get some coffee, take a bio break, whatever. And as soon as I walked away from my computer, my partner's like, are you here? Are you there? Sherry, are you there? Because I'm green. It takes five minutes for it to turn yellow, right? So you can manually set, say, hey, I'm going to grab some coffee. I'm just going to put it as a peer away, and then now I'm going to be yellow for whoever looks at that, okay? Be sure if you set your status manually, you have to go in and reset the status, or you'll be on a peer away indefinitely, okay? I do like that they finally did add the duration, so you don't have to remember to go back and reset it. If you see the uh, available under that burning thing right here, duration, I can say I'm busy for the next hour, and then it will automatically reset, and you don't have to remember to do that. The other one is this status message. So this shows up in the chat and um, conversation. And when people are, start to message you, say, hey, I'm at Tom's V Next. And I'm going to um, pass things off to Patty. If you need something, ask Patty. And I'm going to at mention her by name. Did you know you could do that in your status message? Yeah. So at mention the person that's your backup while you're out of the office. And the big one that I think to me this should be by default should be selected. Show when people message me because otherwise what's the point? We can also set that for a specific duration. I'm, I'm at Tom's V next today and tomorrow, so I'm going to have it turn off you know, on Wednesday at 5 o'clock. Right. And right from here, you can schedule it out of office, which does tie together with Outlook. Click Done. Now, if somebody goes to message me, do you see this little gray banner that pops up at the top? Somebody's in a conversation in chat or in Teams, right here above the chat, it'll say, I'm at Tom's V next. If you need something, contact Patty. Now, Patty's going to get the, the little notification that she's been mentioned by me so she knows she's my backup. And any, they're not going to spend their time trying to get a hold of me when I'm not going to be back until Thursday. Right? So big productivity killer, messaging, emailing people that aren't there. They're not going to respond. And with something that's on fire for me may not be on fire for that other person. Now I know I need to go talk to Patty if I need something that, she, that comes up. Okay? Who's going to use that now? Ooh, yeah. Be proactive. And you don't have to wait to get the message to get the notification, which is nice. All right. Um, dimensions. Are you all using dimensions? Like my mother, everything is the, it's the Walmart. I go to the, you know, I, I'm, I bought from the Amazon. Dimensions are in here. 
So mentions are used to draw people's attention, and I don't think they're used enough. People like to post things in their chats and their channels, but am I going to see that? How many of you get text messages? Like right now, I'm on silent. My, my phone may blow up, but I won't know. When I log back in, I might see the most recent ones. That to me is kind of like the chat and the conversations in Teams. I'm not going to see real-time activity. I might miss it. So it depends on me going to look. So I have 45 little options in my activity bell. All right. I want to see just the ones that are important to me right now. I only want to see the unread ones because the other ones I've already paid attention to. I want to filter those by where I was mentioned. So here are the ones that I need to pay attention to because somebody called me by name. This is my triage. I start here. If you didn't call me out by name, you're not that important to me. Right? Okay. Now what type of mention is it? Is it a personal mention, a team mention, or a channel mention? So again, there's where those notifications play in. How, how actively am I going to be notified when somebody chats with me? So if I go out to Teams and pick one of my channels, maybe Digital Assets Web, and I say, new conversation at Patty, do you have the new logo? She's going to get a personal mention, and that shows up with the little at sign next to it. If I say at uh, design or digital assets web. So I'm doing a channel mention now. Um, do you have the graphics for the banner? Right? Who has these? I don't know who has them. Somebody in the team probably has them. Or I can do a, a team mention. So at uh, Mark 8 project team, where's my stuff? Okay, so how do those show up in your activity bell? They come in as mentions, either as a personal mention, you'll see the at sign. A channel mention has the um, little icon. Did, I change, did they change the icons on these? One looks like a little building and the other one looks like a group. So you can tell what type of mention they are in your mention. So the, and you can filter them by it. So I only want to see the things that I've been mentioned in. And I don't think people use those enough. You want, you want me to pay attention? I have 45 things I need to pay attention to. Where am I going to focus my time? In Teams, you see I have the little at notification on it. Here's the activity. The red options are where I have activity that I need to pay attention to. So I'm going to click that one. And then you'll see the little, um, this is an important notification. There's a personal mention for those. So pay attention to where those mentions are. They show up in little activity. So the notifications that I asked for, if they personally reply to me or mention me, I get an active, I get a purple banner. Maybe I missed those purple banners because I was not sitting at my computer waiting for them to pop up. Right. So how else am I going to know? You've got to mention them. Be more productive by letting people know you need their attention. And then a you as the person that's been mentioned, use that filter panel to find out which ones you've been mentioned in first. Okay? Because otherwise it's just fluff. Who has time for fluff? <laughs> yeah. Those love languages, you know, the five love languages, mine are don't put more crap in my calendar. I can't. My husband's really good at that. <laughs> so I don't have one of those five. It's like, don't add to my plate. All right, tracking action items. This was a big holdout for me in Teams because did I mention I'm really, really good at Outlook? I, I triage. I have a whole series on my blog about how to triage your inbox and be more productive out of Outlook. And then they said, no, now you have to use Teams. And I'm getting all of these things. People are asking questions like, well, I need to follow up on that. I need to take care of that. And for the longest time, they made it really hard. So if I am at mentioned in this and I need to take care of it, you hover over it, I can like it, I can give it a thumbs up and give it a heart, I can do all these things. But guess what? Under the little dot, 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 and guess what? Way more under the more actions, now they have create task. Why isn't it right click and create a task or add to my to-do? Why did they bury it three clicks down, right? But it does work that way. Create a task. It's going to ask me, where do you want to put it? 
This looks a lot like planner to me. I don't know about y'all, but there's I have my task, so that's the to do. You, if you have a planner board tied to this, you can put it in there too. Real basic information, due date, puts in the notes, click add task, and now that's in my to do list. So you don't have, and you can add to do, click the little dot dot dot, task by planner and to do, add it to your panel. Make sure you right click and pin it, so it stays there. And here are the tasks that I need to get today. So here's that one that I just did. I need to follow up by um, Thursday. Cool? It's in your tasks. Yeah. Yeah. So task by planner and to-do. Tasks is your to-do list. Um, if you have the planned, if you use planned, these are the ones that come from planner. Assigned to me could be a mix of either, and I'm big on flagging my email. So if you use the to-do, the right-click and follow-up flags for this week, next week, whatever, it knows when tomorrow is today and next week is this week. It keeps track of all of that. So you're, if you have your flagged emails, those show up there too. I work out of here a lot because I don't know about y'all, but I don't. I say I have residual, residual gestational brain damage. After I had kids, I swear I can't remember anything. And, you know. If you've ever had a, if you've ever, you've been pregnant, if you ever had a pregnant wife, their brain is never the same after you have a kid. So I had a woman get really mad at me that I said that. I'm like, no, I'm just saying this is my reality. Okay. So use the tasks to track your tasks that are in there. You can also pin or um, follow them if you need to. So again, look looking back at those mentions. Go back to my activity and go to a mention. So Diego mentioned this. I need to take care of it dot, 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 I can share it to Outlook. So if you need to send it to somebody else and forward it to them as a message, you can do that there. Save this message. That puts a little bookmark on it. It doesn't mark it as a task, but it will show up in your saved options underneath. Do you see this little profile right here where it says saved? So those are the ones that you have saved. They're, this creates a little bookmark, and you can remove the bookmark. So something you just want to pay attention to. It doesn't necessarily have a... Uh, task associated with it. Okay, so a couple of ways to save and follow up on the 45 things that are brand new that I, now I've got to pay attention to, right? All right. Context switching, managing your application. So this is kind of going back to that. Who needs to work together? What are they working on? How are they going to get that job done? I can go to the waffle and I can say, hey, I need to go to my to-do list, which from Teams is smaller for some reason. Um, I'm going to go and surf down here to to-do. Here's my to-do list, right? I can go to Planner and find out the tasks I need to get done in Planner. Now, I love this view of Planner because it's across all of the plans. How many of you are using Planner? Anybody never heard of Planner, doesn't know what it does? Nobody? Okay, good. Um, I love the way that you can't just close out of that. So here's all my plans. They're assigned to me regardless of which plan they're in. So if I'm working on tasks, I'm trying to knock them out, I'm going to work from here. Because I may have 20 different teams with different planner boards and different tabs. That's not effective. Work in the tool that you're, new, that you're focusing in on. If you've ever um, heard the getting things done um, methodology, you focus in on certain things, compartmentalize your day on certain things. This is how you can focus in. What do I need to get done? Here's my to-do list. Or am I working on the project and I need to work in teams because that's where all the tools are together. It all depends. So in context switching is the number one productivity killer. If you're moving from application to application to application, that's not productive. If you go into teams and you're like, I'm working on the market project right now, I'm going to add the tabs across the top for all the tools Here's, I've got my planner, my planner board. I may have my, here's my product roadmap. It's all in one place. So build out the workspace and bring all the tools together in one place so people don't have to switch from product to product to get what they need to get done. Okay. Are we good with that one, context switching? Manage your application. All right. Here's my pet 
I can't tell you how many times I go out and I see somebody took their J drive, their K drive, their S drive, their N drive, and they dumped it all into one folder in Microsoft Teams because they don't realize what they're doing. They created channels. They might have created channels. But do you realize when you create a, a team, it creates one document library. So you go into Teams and back there, I'm going to go into Files. Here's all of my files for all of my teams across all the teams. Great. I might be able to find something recent. That's helpful. But if I go into the team and I go to the go to market plan and click on the files, here's all the things that are for go to market plan. That's great. There's only about eight of those. My opinion, the only thing that should live in here are work in progress. You should not, I'm migrating some sites right now. They have 70,000 documents in one document library. Does anybody know what the list view threshold is for the web for SharePoint? 5,000, right? And so all of their views are breaking because they have too much crap in one place. I have a whole other session that I do about getting ready to move to the cloud. And one of the things is, throw away the trash. You're moving into a clean new house. You're not going to move the boxes of garbage with you. Why did you do that? Why did you take your end drive and do one huge swoop and have 15 folders deep in this? It's not usable. People can't find things. So behind the scenes, here's the spoiler alert, nothing actually lives in Teams. Your library for your Teams is actually stored in SharePoint. And when you create a new channel in a team, it creates a corresponding folder for that channel. This architecture makes my hair go up. I don't like it. To me, it should have created a new document library for each one of the channels, in my opinion. We can't re-architect it, we can't fix it, we gotta deal with what Microsoft gave us. But this is a SharePoint site. You can have many document libraries. You don't stuck with just one. Plus, this main document library, remember what I said? Everybody has the same access. Everybody has the same permission. People can go in and edit this. After I've done the go-to-market plan, do I want people going in there and editing it? No. This is finalized. But unless I move it out of this library, or I mess with the permissions on this library, Bad, bad plan, don't ever do that. I'll smack your hand. Don't ever do that. You need to find another place to put it. So the way I kind of explain document storage, OneDrive is like that file cabinet that sits underneath your desk. You have control over it. You have the keys to it. You can organize it however you like. You can share it with other people however you want. Take their access away. SharePoint are like the file cabinets that are out in the hallway, the big file cabinets with the drawers. Certain people have keys. Maybe they have keys to certain drawers. Right? So if you want to create another file cabinet, real easy. You just go back to the main site. Do new document library. Maybe our finalized presentations go in their own library. Presentations. Throw it in the navigation. And after we're done working on them in the, you know, the live environment, so here's my go-to-market plan. Here's the presentations. They're finalized. I'm going to select these and move them to that other library. Here's my documents. And oops, back to here. Here's the presentations library. And I'm just going to move them here. Cool. They're gone. They're not in there anymore. Now, how do I lock them out to make sure other people don't mess with them? There's also metadata around those documents. For presentations for me, my presentation is like, what event was I speaking at? What was my topic? You know, what's the length of this presentation? There's, there's things I want to be, somebody's like, I need a 45-minute presentation. I'm not going to go through the 200 files that I have and figure out which one was 45 minutes. I have a column that says this is geared for this style or this type of topic or this type of conference, right? Um, so same thing, create metadata instead of creating folders. So in my presentations, I might want to add a column for uh, date and time. So presentation date. I might add a column to who the presenter is. Maybe that's a person. Oops. 
presenter. Um, and one thing, people always skip the description. These are the prompts to the people, the instructions of what you want them to put in there. So always fill those out. Who was the presenter? And do I want to allow multiple people? Maybe there were multiple people that did that presentation. Okay. I can create things like my presentations where I was the presenter. I can create different views of this library. Okay. I can also, on the library, oops, library settings, more library settings, because it doesn't take us there directly. Permissions for this document library. Anyone that's not, I'm going to stop inheriting from the team slash SharePoint site. And make everybody but the owners read only. Don't touch my stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm working in teams. I don't want to have to know where to get the content. I need those, those presentations to be visible. They're no longer in the team. That's OK. Remember, how are you going to get that work done? I'm going to add that library back. So here's the document library. I could pull up the ones that are in this site. Or I can use a SharePoint link if I have it straight away. Insert Jeopardy theme here. I'll take this one. teams, use a link, paste it in there. I'm sorry, I can barely hear you. Uh-huh. That's why I do it at the doc. I do not recommend doing it at the, you can do it at the file level. That's unmaintainable. I, I think the document library is reasonable because everything you put in there is now read only. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, or you can even block them from downloading it so they can't even download a copy. You can make it restricted read. Yeah. Okay. Correct. So you have a separate SharePoint site with the documents in it. Yeah. And if that solves, I always start with what's your problem? You don't want to invite them into the team. Right, you probably in a, a private channel has to be a subgroup of the team members. The shared channels can be external people, but that has to be turned on, and that's a whole to me. That's a whole nother. My hair goes up. The SharePoint architect to me goes like, what? What were they thinking when they did this? Um, but the um, if it solves the problem, if it gives the audience what they need where they need it, then that's okay. I do that a lot for. Content that, you know, I work in HR, I have the employee manual. I'm not going to let you into the team to look at my version of the employee manual. I'm going to have a communication site where I publish the only copy they should be able to find in that space, and that's okay. There's not, they're not synchronized anymore, but yeah. It, Did I mention this is my peeve, right? So here's my other peeve with this. People mess with this document library. Don't mess with this doc. Don't add additional folders in here. Bad plan. This is tied to the team and the channels. And now look at all these, fo these files that are nowhere. You won't see them in Teams because they don't show up in the channel files. They're sitting, they're floating in the background. Right. Yeah, because they don't know. They don't, yeah, they don't know it actually lives in SharePoint. That's as far as it goes. Yeah. 
because they're trying to make it user-proof because they don't, instead of teaching them what it looks like, they're like, oh, let's put a Band-Aid on it and stick this in channels thing at the top. Yeah. Yes. And they share this file from here, and they don't realize when they shared the file from here with somebody who's not in the team, they just gave that person access to your team. Yeah, it broke all the permissions. Yeah, so we need to teach them. That's what I do what I do. It's like, let, let, let's show you. I'm, I'm not going to send you out in the world and, and good luck and, and give you, you know, some water and bread because that's what they've done. It, you know, and now they've fallen down on their face. Let's, let's teach them. You have to understand how this works. So it's funny, I, um, I do one session, I think I did it at this last event, was, uh, spoiler alert, nothing actually lives in teams. And you, I could just see the boom, boom, mind blown all over the room. And like, they didn't realize that that's the architecture. And yeah, it's a big deal. Managing your files is a big deal. And if I don't want everybody to see it, don't put it in teams, work in chat. And then when you're ready to, to have ever the peanut gallery involved in it, then move it. It's okay, you can do that. It's like taking it out of your file cabinet and put it in a cabinet in the hallway where everybody has access to it. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. So people try to put it in teams, so nobody, and they, they break inheritance, so nobody will see it. It's like, no, that's not what that's for. That's not how any of this works. Like, come on. <laughs> All right, so everybody good with managing files, giving you some ideas? Create more document like you can... Buy more file cabinets. You, and guess what? You don't have to buy them. They're free. You just move them in and, and organize them however you like. One thing that, one caution that I do try to share with people and, and I take the soapbox moment is everything in a web environment needs to be accessible in three clicks. Having folders upon folders, 17 folders deep that you shared with me earlier, right, um, is not usable. It's not usable in the network drive is not usable on your hard drive. It's definitely not usable on the web. So think of if this were still a paper world, and I had to put it in a paper, I would, I would have a drawer, a hanging file, and a manila folder, and then papers, right? I would never have a manila folder inside of 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 a manila folder. That would not happen. So why do we do that in the digital world? We can, those things that are manila folders, those subfolders, should be metadata that you can use to sort, filter, and categorize your documentation. Your folders should be three, right? Drawer, hanging file, manila folder, three clicks. So if you had to move it back in a paper world, how would you organize it? Think of it that way. Anything else can be metadata. Okay. All right, I'm getting a little yellow sign here. I love these little session things. Okay, so work in process versus reference. Folder or not to folder, less than three clicks. Is it rot? Get rid of it. We don't need this, I, and this is straight up real world, the 1995 sign up for the potluck list. Why do we have that? Nobody cares who brought the, who brought the turkey, whose sandwiches, nobody cares. Right. So, but people, I, I admit it, my name is Sherry, I'm a digital hoarder. I have terabyte, multiple terabyte hard drives that when I started looking into them, I still had courseware from 2000. Office 2000, so like still 23 years ago. Why do I have it? Because I didn't have time to clean it out. But if you're going to move into the cloud and get organized in the cloud, don't move the garbage. Don't just drag and drop because you're going to end up with a lot of issues. There's naming convention issues. There's uh, URL length issues. You don't want to get into that. If it's redundant, outdated, obsolete, or trivial, get rid of it. Finally, digging for gold, trying to find stuff. Everything in Office 365 is searchable. It's our job to make it findable. So what are some of the techniques that we have for making it findable? The first thing is, in your conversations, use hashtags. Those create little indexes. So if I'm in the Teams chat and I put in you know, hashtag 
graphic design is cool. There is a little crawl search indexing that has to happen, but if you search for later graphic design, right, it's going to show, you see where it says hashtag graphic design. So use hashtags to draw attention or create indexes that make things findable. You could just put in graphic design, but it will index it. It's just a term that might find. If you want it to pop up to the top of your search results, project names, things like that, then put the hashtag in front of it. That's one of them. Um, the other one is search. But when I search at the top, I could search for marketing, and I get top hits. They could be teams. They could be files that have marketing in them. If I press enter, I get more results. And they could be messages where people said marketing. They could be people that have marketing in their name or in their, um, in their skills and abilities. They could be files that, that, that have that in, either in the name or in the um, content. There are two attributes in every file. One of them is a best kept secret. The first one is the name. Everybody knows how to do that. The second one is the title. How many of you have gone into the properties of the document and looked at the actual title of the document? Guess what SharePoint searches first? The title. So for me, my, I have naming conventions for my, my documents, but like the spring marketing campaign also better be the title of that campaign. My courseware has a naming convention of who's the, like MS for Microsoft, um, WRD for Word, so there's four letters there for whatever product it is, the year, the level, right? That's the name of my document. It's not. Microsoft Word 2003 version 5 or version 3 or whatever, right? I, it's not that because that's too long for a name, in, especially in the web. The pretty name is the title that you can change as much as you want. If you change the name of the document, you, change, you lose all your versioning. So use naming conventions and use the, the properties of the document to make it more searchable. There's keywords in those documents that you can make them more searchable. So, your job is to make it findable. You want people to find it because otherwise it may eventually find it in the content of the document 40 slides down. Guess where that's going to end up in the search results? Three, four, five pages ahead. And that was the number one thing they were looking for. So if you want people to find things, you need to make them searchable. And you can use these lovely refiners to say, hey, I'm looking for the marketing PowerPoints. Here's all the PowerPoints. And I'm only going to see the things that I have permission to see. Everything's security trimmed. So people won't find stuff and then click on it and go, oh, you're not allowed to see that, which is good. So everything in there is searchable and findable. All right. One last thing. Best kept secret of teams. Y'all want to know what it is? You know you do. Okay. This is my, my best productivity color or productivity thing. I could go in here and change my status to uh, be right back. I could go in here and under my activity, click the little dot, 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 click the other dot, 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 and say, I only want to see the ones where I mentioned. I could go into Teams and scroll, scroll, scroll down in my conversations to where I find the go to market plan. Three to five clicks in everything I just did. Up here in the search bar, if you press the slash key, this is shortcut carry away, it there's a little uh, notification people don't know that says, or type slash for a list of commands. Type slash, let's say I want to BRB. Slash, enter, BRB, hit enter. Just put my status as be right back. If I type slash and I say uh, uh, mentions, it goes to my filter, my feed panel, filters it by my mentions. If I do slash on red, Again, goes to my feed and gives me just the things that are unread. If I do slash go to, tab, and then type in, maybe I want to go to a go to market plan. There's my go to market plan, and it'll tell me which team it's in, and it takes me right to that channel. And then finally, if I do slash chat, and I want to talk to Patty, say hi. 
it just started a chat for me. I don't have to go to chat, find Patty, create a chat, and start a flash chat. And a sweet chat. Flash chat, slash call. I want to call somebody. You're welcome. How many, who, how was that? How many of you was that new for? Best kept secret of teams. Okay, cool. Now, spread the word. Let's make it not a secret because we all need to be more productive, right? All right. So, I would just want to leave you with um, this. If you'd like to shoot that QR code, I do have uh, a learning portal that's built into bite sized pieces. If you'd like a 30 day trial and you want it, it's like, hey, I want to play with Teams some more. If I want, if you want to, Learn any of the Microsoft Office products, I'm happy to um, share that with you. Uh, they'll also have our presentations available, and there's a bit.ly for that, so the Empower Me. Again, case sensitive. And I invite you to reach out to me at any time. Um, I love your questions because I'm constantly trying to look for topics to do for my Tip Tuesday or my Waffle Wednesday webinars, and um, if you, your question could be one of those. So, yeah, everybody needs to know this. Go ahead. Um, activities should show you everything. Um, right. And I, I love these because I always learn from smarter people than me because they know why it works that way. <laughs> All right, yes. I try as much as possible to stay out of the box because what I find is they're not supported, they break. You invest a lot of money in them and then Microsoft comes out with it anyway. I, I don't, um, for teams, there, there are, as you know, an entire plethora of options. So which tools, again, what do they need to get done? I always start with what's your problem. So it's not what's your problem, but let's start with what's your business challenge. Can, if, if something within the Microsoft stack can do at least 80% of that, then why are we paying for another tool? Because um, you're already invested in that. And people, and, and it's all cohesive. It's when they're all disconnected that it, it causes issues. But um, there was one for Planner, iPlanner, that I tried to use at one point, and I could never get it to authenticate. And then, and then they changed the security protocols, and now it broke. And this is a mainstream tool that is business critical that we've become dependent on, and that connection breaks. But and it only did 20% more than what the out-of-the-box stuff did. So I, you know, I there's some that are great. Uh, Orchestry, uh, shameless plug for Joy, um, has a great uh, add-in that does a lot of adoption, productivity, SharePoint management, things like that. I would say that Microsoft doesn't do, but yeah, there's not a lot of them that I. Anybody else have a different opinion? Some of your favorite add-ins. Okay, he's cutting me off. <laughs> okay. I'm happy to answer questions. Well, the next speaker probably needs to get up and get ready. So. <laughs>